ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stardom Review. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the Taco Princess herself. It's Mel Ball. How you doing, Mel Ball? I am doing great, Andre. It's been an interesting day here at Chateau Mel Ball. We've got some people staying over for the weekend. So that's why I'm kind of in a different area here. It looks like the dog is snuck in. And he'll probably be sleeping under my chair now. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well, doing well. I got another workout in today. Uh, yeah. As we record this on Thursday, got a workout in. Feels good. My legs actually feel really good. I upped the weight this week and upped Ooh. the weights a little bit on everything. My legs are feeling feeling tender. So I, I'm imagining when I wake up in the morning, they're going to hurt. So, yeah. Uh, just eat, drink some BCAs before bed, some water. I don't know Pray. what a BCA is. I don't know what a BCA is. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I have no idea what a BCA is. So we've discussed this before. Your amino acids, sir. I don't have any. We gotta get you on it. Get your personal trainer there, Mr. Rich King, to tell you some yeah. recommendations yeah. of his. And if you're in the Edmonton area, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout him out right now. My boy, Mr. Rich King for with RK Athletics. Go check him out. Great physical training. He's look he's he is taking new clients right now. So if you Ooh. are interested, message me. I can send you his information. If you are if you're in the Edmonton area, uh check it, check up you please check him out. And also check out his phenomenal entrance music. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> But we're not here to talk Rich King. We're here to talk some stardom professional wrestling. But before you, I want to mm -hmm. thank each and every one of you. We want, to, we want to say thank you for all the great support you've given us, all the likes, the subscribes, the uh, all the views. We really do appreciate uh, all the great support you guys have given us here. Uh, I know that Osprey video we just dropped a couple days ago is just uh, that one's blowing up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody really looking looking to see some uh, us talk about some Osprey and Mare Fuji. I mean, what a great match it was. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I probably the best Mare Fuji match in years, <laughs> easily. Mm -hmm. And then now we just talked the September 24th New Japan show with an easy, easy match of the of the year contender from Will Ospreay and Yoda Suji main event mm -hmm. in that show. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend going to ch check out a review of that and check out that show. Highly recommend that. Yes. Also, hit that notification bell. So you can learn every time we drop into uh, what do we drop? I'm, I'm not sure. What what do we drop when? It's gonna drop you soon. I don't know what we drop. Oh, uh, videos. Ding dong. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, the energy on Andre and my balls. My terrible humor. I've been up since four forty-five this morning, and it's now nine fifteen in the evening as we record this. So, I and I I worked all day, had a workout, did some editing, you know, all the all the fun stuff. Busy, busy, busy. I'm a busy, busy boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we are here to talk some Stardom Five Star Grand Prix from September eighteenth and the twentieth. We will only be talking the Five Star Grand Prix matches and giving you an update on the uh standing so mm -hmm. we are gonna get into it ladies and gentlemen there we go five star grand prix 2023 i love that logo it's just it's simple it's, it's simple. pretty yeah I, I, I like the simplicity of the logo this year mm -hmm. very much very we're trendy. gonna we're gonna kick it off we're gonna kick it off with not in the red stars division nasty boy taking on ami saray mm -hmm. A lot of great reversals, reversals and dodging uh, moves to start. Nak is the arm drag, sending Ami to the ropes, but she misses the drop kick in the ropes, and Ami gets a big lariat. Uh, she gets Nat's point in the corner, the skits the speed chops, gets the double chop to the back. Uh, she lays Natsu Poi across the across the turnbuckle and gets a splash in the midsection, gets a two. She then applies the Boston Crab, then transitions into a single leg crab, but that's what gets to the ropes. Man, did she sit back in this one? Mm -hmm. mm, she had it mm -hmm. in the uh, boy then reverses a wheelbarrow suplex into a bulldog, goes to the top rope, hits a high cross off the top for two. They're they start the trade, they're trading, they're just go reversing each other's moves. Ami um, gets a suplex for two, then hits a spin out Samoan drop for two, then applies the high angle Boston Crab. And she's got Nasty Boy in this one for a good bit, but Nasty Boy does eventually fight and gets to the ropes. Mm -hmm. They trade forearms back and forth. Nasty Boy gets a standing triangle armbar, but 
Ami does get to the rope. She, she makes her way to the ropes as she's fading. Nat's boy gets the drop kick in the ropes, hits the fisherman spinning neck breaker for two. Uh, Nat's boy goes to the top but misses the ferial splash, and Ami hits a lariat. Argentine backbreaker by Ami Sare, but Nat's boy gets out and into an, and then like she's got her up, then she like flips out, pulling and then pulls an arm bro. She's falling to the mat. Look, mm-hmm. I really like the transition there. It looked mm-hmm. really good. Um, and but Ami then and then she transitions into a triangle, which is around. But then Ami stands up and just slams yeah. Nat to the the mat to break the hole. Really good. Nice spot. Like I love that spot. Um, mm-hmm. Release German suplex by Nat. She gets on Ami's shoulder and goes for that spin into the roll up. But Ami stops it and hits a power bomb for two. Uh, Natsu, uh, Natsupoi reverses like a thunderbolt and hit and gets the ferial ring for two. Ami hits the blockbuster and uh, or the running blockbuster, which is uh, sorry, the headhunter, whatever. She's a flip neck breaker there, and mm-hmm. then twisting brainbuster, but she only gets two. Ami then picks up Natsupoi, gets her on the shoulder, hits like a thunderbolt. Ape shit. And gets the win. <laughs> I was I was quite surprised because I didn't know any of the results going. Sometimes I know some of the results going in as I'm watching these shows. I usually watch them a couple. I'm watching them a few days later, right after they. Mm-hmm. I was really surprised that that Ami got this win. Can I be real with you? I'm not. Um, I just it seems like you know there's always those people who have you know not so great at tournaments. We saw it with Suri last year. We kind of saw it a little bit with Mirai at the beginning, but she seems to have kind of like mm-hmm. figured herself out going forward. But then we have Natsupoi. And like, as, as I'm, I'm not going to lie, like she has been putting on, like she's doing some G1 Yoshihashi shit right here is, is what she's doing in this Grand Prix. She has showed up. She's doing her best. And she's been relentless in this tournament. Unfortunately, much like, you know, before the last couple of years, that G1 Yoshihashi energy just wasn't helping. And unfortunately, it seems to not really be helping Poi this year as much as she could. She has been doing well and picking up some wins here and there. But I feel like she's not picking up those very important wins like against Nesu Katora, against Ami Sore. You know, we've seen her take some losses and as a goddess of stardom champion that's not looking so good especially when you you can take into consideration her partner Sarianu I mean Anu is doing worse I believe yeah. from Poi. Well so, she's she's four and f- like four two and two in this tournament I think. Mm. No she's two she's three 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 and two yeah, so so neither yeah. one is doing like they're not doing terrible, but they're not doing like what we would in, in consider champion level great either. Um, and, and, and looking at Nasu Poi, we were literally talking about her being one of the two front runners at one point, and now she's just in the pack. Yeah, and like granted, she did give up a massive size advantage to Ami mm-hmm. in this one, and but like I said. Poi has been relentless in this tournament. She has been that savage little pixie that I've been referring to. And she had some tremendous offense against Ami. But Ami, I mean, buttercup of the Powerpuff Girls with the prettiest hair at the party there. She's just pure power. Suri was really thinking when she put this team of God's Eye together with these three, with her, Ami, and Mira, as just three powerful, intelligent, veteran-esque workers in that ring. And like, Poi also started this off super quick, trying to pull off that cartwheel, like, right off the hop. I really thought that this was going to be Poi's match, but then at the same time, it's like, hmm, I had to remember, she's not been picking up those wins. I'm, I was pleasantly surprised that Ami picked this up, um, but also didn't really not expect her not to, given how Poi's tournament has been going up until this point. Yeah. And again, like I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure in the ending. And when Ami won, I'm like, yes, I loved it. Yeah. I was very happy to see her team celebrating with her at ringside, too. 
Me too. Me too. Mm-hmm. Well, we move on to the main event of this show because there's only two, only two yeah. five star matches on the September 18th show. Mm-hmm. We've got my favorite in the world, one of my favorites in the world, Miss Mina Shirakawa mm-hmm. versus Momo Watanabe. Uh, Momo attacks Mina during her entrance with the bat, beating her up. Uh, but Momo- we did get to see the Club Venus intro dance. She gave yes, us the privilege she, she, of seeing the dance. We did get the dance, but then Momo comes out to ruin the rest of it, and it's yes. really bad. We didn't get to see her do her spin into the knee, into the no, into the Shawn Michaels. Well, we got the little da 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 da. Yeah. Uh, so we get uh, Momo whips me. Like they, they go through the ring, essentially starting the match, mm-hmm. um, and then they go back out. And Momo whips me into the chairs. Ruaka beats. Ruaka starts beating up Mariah May. I'm like, no, leave Mariah May alone. No. <laughs> I was very mad about that. Uh, Momo's got in the chest kicks to Mina, then runs Mina into the post. She gets her back in the ring. She's choking her. Uh, Mina fights back with her own kicks to the chest. But Momo catches one. Then she hits another chest kick, dropping Mina. She's Mm -hmm. choking her on the rope. She gets the drop kick in the corner. But Mina does come back with the drop kick to the knee. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mina starts working over the knee with slamming it and like knee breakers and everything. Uh, Momo fights off the figure four and gets a drop to hold to Mina into the ropes and gets a kick to the back. And then Mm -hmm. a PK and gets a two count. She then applies the cross, the the classic cross face chicken wing, mm-hmm. but Mina gets the ropes. Momo pulls Mina, uh, like pu- puts Mina on the ropes, kicks her in the head. She falls to the like she puts her like on top of the ropes, like hanging over the ropes. Kicks mm-hmm. her in the head. Mina goes tumbling to the floor. Um, Momo misses the kick off the apron. Mina gets a Northern Light suplex on the floor. Back in the ring, she got gets the Sonata special, the magic screw for two. Yes, I love I love that Mina's incorporating that move. Mm-hmm. Um, Mina hits the spinning elbow into the corner, then the top rope green killer, but she only gets two. Uh, Mina catches one of the kicks, hits a dragon screw, she apply and applies the figure four. Fuck is fought off by Momo with assistance from Starlight Kid, who's like grabbing at her head because Mina was right next to the ropes. And the ref's getting all pissed off at Starlight like Kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Momo gets her bat, but the ref takes it away. And Mina hits the glorious sword, which is that running in Saguri. Mm-hmm. But as she drills for the seatbelt pin, Me- Momo slips out, gets a kick to the head. Uh, Momo hits a couple me- running meteoras and t- hits the top rope meteora for two. Um, Momo gets back up, but Mina hits Momo. And uh, sorry, Me- Momo goes back up to the top, but uh, Mina hits Momo and she comes up. They're fighting on top, and then Mina hits the avalanche impaler DDT, but she only gets two. Momo hits a tiger, it comes back, hits a tiger suplex, but Mina hits a rolling elbow. Uh, Mina blocks a kick, hits a spinning back fist. Mina gets Momo on her shoulders and hits that spin out face buster slam, electric chair face buster slam thing that she does. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know what to call it because I don't know what the <laughs> actual name of the move is. Mina's not in the game as far as I know, so I can't look at her move set. I need, mm-hmm. her, I need Mina in the game, in, in the Strong Spirits game. That's what I need. I'm honestly surprised she isn't in there already. I mean, we got Cash and Masaki. Why don't we have Mina Shirakawa? Yeah, I need. I Heck, need we already have Momo Watanabe. I need Mina Shirakawa in the goddamn game. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, uh, Mina gets right. Yeah, his uh, let's share face buster thing. And then uh, applies to figure four, but Momo pulls the, pulls the ref into her and then shoves the ref onto Mina, breaking the figure four. Momo gets the bat, hits Mina, uh, and then hits that. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is now, but the the front dude, the dude buster, and the, the inverted, the modified tombstone pile driver in the front. Um, mm. And she applies the crossface chicken wing again and then hits a bridging tiger suplex for two. Uh, Mina comes back, rolls up Momo for two. Then Momo hit, but then Momo comes back with a PK. She hits that pump handle suplex over, over her head for two with the bridge. Uh, then uh, Mina stops the uh, pump handle driver. And then, uh, and as she's ducking out of the way, Ruaka is going to hit Mina in the head, and she hits Momo in the head with the case. So mm-hmm. Mina gets the seat, pe- it rolls her up with the seat felt pin, and Mina Shirakawa sure, steals the win. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, she does. Mind you, all of this shit's happening in front of the ref, mm-hmm. of course. 
doing as nothing. Usual. Being, as usual. Being the useful refs that we expect at Stardom. Um, yeah, the also something we, we didn't kind of touch on here. Mina got busted open pretty qu uh, quickly at the beginning of the match there when she took that um, – uh, like face first to the pole kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just not able to get her hands up in time and totally took the full brunt of that. Mm -hmm. um, didn't seem to face her. Like she no. kept checking it and wiping it, but did not seem to face her at all. In fact, I think it kind of pissed her off a little bit. Um, enabled her fired to kind of keep up. going in this. Yeah, fired, um, her up. fired her up for sure. Oh, hundred percent. Cause every time she check it, you'd see her kind of like, mm. And then suddenly she she would mount some kind of really awesome offense. Um, yeah. Uh, there was the one point where I saw she caught Mina with the bat, just took Mina right over, and I was just like, man, sick of that. Happy she kicked out after that, but gosh dang. We gotta, mm. I mean, at least they're no house of torture. All right? Yeah. That's, like they, that's a blessing. They do have their shenanigans, but it doesn't feel like they that's the only thing they rely on. Because, like, mm -hmm. I believe, like, I truly think Momo, like, I know she can win a match without having any shenanigans. 100%. Where I don't believe Sho or Evil or Yujiro or Togo or, I guess now, Kanemaru could win a match without using shenanigans. So. I mean... Kanemaru doesn't hide it though. He calls himself the heel master. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of been he's been doing that. <laughs> I would say he's more veteran than House of Torture at it. Oh, very much so. Very much so. But again, I I, I still enjoy the way to tie stuff. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me because it's not every second thing they do. 100 percent Yeah. Anything else? Oh, and then Mina mm -hmm. does do speech after. I didn't get actually get the full trend I didn't get all the all the speech on this one I've got it on Julia's and Tam's for on the second night but I didn't get Mina just got to kind of got a little recap uh, Mina mm -hmm. is bleeding after the match she talks about it she just makes a little speech about how even with the blood she looks cute uh, and she talks about having two more matches and she will win this and she wants to win this tournament mm -hmm. which is theoretically possible because you can get to 12 points and win the blue stars it is possible I'd like to see it could you imagine Tora versus Mina no, Tam versus Mina in a rematch. Then no. Mina wins, and she gets her title match at. Uh, at, uh, at, at I mean, the Tam needs to start winning some shit. Well, we'll talk about a Tam win coming up here, because we're gonna hop over to September twentieth, which this match was supposed to happen on this show, but Utami Hayashida has now left the tournament. As she is injured. So I'm pulling up Post Wrestling's uh, little article on it. Um, Utami Ashida has been pulled from stardom. This is, she was pulled from the 23rd and 24th days due to injury. And this one too. Um, she is dealing with a cervical hernia. And she'll be sidelined for the next little while. So all of her matches for the rest of the tournament are going to be forfeited. Um, which really sucks because... I think she's been doing some of the best stuff. And and uh, credit to Post Wrestling and, and the man reporting it, Andrew Thompson on there. I was going to give the going to give the shout out to, to those who I'm reading <laughs> off of. But yeah, that really sucks that she's out with the cervical hernia there. Because I would have I was really looking forward to this match. And I was really looking forward to a Tommy and Julia on the twenty fourth. And like Same. Yeah. I a little yeah. disappointed by not getting this. But again, I hope she heals up quickly and comes back. When she's fully healed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, there's always that kind of thought that it could be a silver lining for her. Maybe there's some kind of other injury that she might be nursing or maybe just some general wear and tear that she could use in a little bit of time to, to kind of heal, recuperate and come back stronger. Cause like her U S excursion was supposed to be something that kind of, I feel re solidified her, in stardom and it really did it started to anyway but you know, she's kind of had a little bit of a rocky comeback and i think maybe the time away will give her um an opportunity to kind of figure things out and come back way stronger but very interesting to see both members of uh queen's quest aphrodite both gone it's aphrodite. weird it feels weird and then on i think it's october 10th 
I want to say Azumi was supposed to be teaming up with Utami in a tag match for her 10th anniversary match, but uh, she will not. And now she will just be facing off with Mayu Iwatani in a singles match. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> very unfortunate. And then very, very what does this what does this mean for Utami in the in the Goddess tournament? It looks like she might not be in the Goddess tournament now. So it's gonna like mm. just it's sad. It is sad and speedy recovery to her. I really um, hope so. She comes back stronger, so. crazier, wilder. Yeah. So Mirai gains two points for the forfeit. Correct. Well, we move on. It's the first five star match of the night. Mm -hmm. actual one. It's Micah versus Mariah May. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, they start like your, your crush versus my crush. Come on. Mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> uh, they, they start quick. May reverses a power bomb into a Hurricane Rana. She gets the speed chops in the corner, puts Micah up top, hits a double chop, and gets the Stratus Rana and gets a two count. Mm -hmm. uh, May stretches Micah on the ropes, hits a drop kick to the back, she tries to hit Micah with the cartwheel bomb off the apron, or the but she or the sunset bomb off the apron. Sorry, but uh, she, Micah holds on and then starts stomping May, and then uh, gets the lariat off the apron. Mm -hmm. Back in the ring, she gets a lariat in the corner, then another lariat for two. Micah hits a delayed suplex, but only gets one out of it, which was surprising. Uh, Micah gets a rear naked choke, uh, then gets the hooks in, but May does get to the ropes. Uh, May gets tossed to the, over over the top to the apron, but she just hit the head kick, hits the top rope draw kick, and hits the tornado DDT for two. Uh, standing butterfly lock by Mariah May, but she gets run into the corner. A series of reversals from both, and uh, May gets the running boot, but then Micah hits a lariat. May comes back with the Barbie blade. And then they each hit each other, like just strike each other in the face, and they both drop. They fight up from their knees, trading forearms on their feet. And Micah gets a power slam for two. Uh, May reverses the another slam into Once Upon a Time. They gets a backdrop suplex for two. Uh, Micah gets this gets just comes out of nowhere with a straight right, hits a spinning lariat, then a power bomb for two, then picks her up. Mitch and Oka Driver two. And Micah gets the win. My crush won. She did. <laughs> but man, what a match this was. Every time we see Mariah, she's just getting better and better and better and better and better. And this match was really a test of her physical strength. And man, did she step up to it. She was giving Micah a really hard go there. And I just got to say, the noises that Mariah makes are just hilariously adorable but add so much to her matches because mm -hmm. she wrestles very like pretty seriously and she can also wrestle pretty comedically the, the her little wah or her little screams when she gets thrown adds to the overall feel of the match and i absolutely mm -hmm. love it and it's not something that everyone can do because if we started seeing someone like maybe Mayu Iwatani doing it, we'd kind of be like, what? What? That'd be kind of weird. But well, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, a perfect example over here is Kevin Owens. Like he yeah. has, he has, he like his facials and when he gets, or his facial expressions and when he gets tossed, he makes weird noises, but it doesn't come yeah. off. It doesn't come off odd. It just comes off like, his character is it's his character and she does mm -hmm. she does it so well yeah tama tonga another example and njpw does the same thing where he when he's doing that splash in the corner he kind of does that da, 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 kind of noise <laughs> i don't know i don't know what it, maybe is that supposed to be a gun i don't know i it's adorable whatever it is um yeah yeah as i said it kind of like adds to the to the full of of it and makes you feel like she's legitimately you know, a little scared of what's going on. And Poi is another good example of someone who does that. Poi screams quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, tremendous fight for Mariah and Micah in this one. Micah definitely power flexed in this one a little bit. I think she turned it up a little bit because she knew she had to. Because um, I feel like Mariah kind of matched Micah a little bit, both in um, height and size, um, which is something I think Micah's not particularly um, used to. 
Um, their back and forth was just tremendous. I really, really liked it. I really liked the little interaction afterwards, after. Mm -hmm. um, when they were having their whatever, they, they had their little words, and then they had their little pinky promise. That always seems to be a, a very big honorable thing over there. So I hope to see these two uh, fight again. It was a mm -hmm. very good match. Me too. I can. I would love to see this match again. So mm -hmm. yeah, this is a good casual watch if you're just looking to like watch a, a match in Stardom just to to have a good time. This is a great match to go back and watch. Yeah, it just under nine minutes. It's a good, just a good quick match to watch. Yeah. And these two did really, really well. And again, you uh -huh. get to see the like. Um, North American British style from Mariah May mm -hmm. with her, her influence of Japanese mixed with Micah's like Japanese strong style. It's absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yeah, very, very good mix. Now we get to this match. Ha <laughs> wow, ha. You have opinions, a, I'm sure. This was a marathon, man. Well, we got <laughs> upset, I'll say. Um, I'll say this. I love Julius Black Gear. I really think it's yeah. so well. Um, so the rest call him for the handshake as he does at the beginning of every match. And they don't always do it, obviously. So Azumi comes in. She's got her hand out. So Julia is really hesitant in the first. And she eventually handshakes. But they do it. Then Julia pulls Azumi in trying to hit the backdrop driver. But then Azumi reverses and hits a flip pile driver and gets a two count. She then hits La Magistral. But then Julia gets up, hits a backdrop driver... Then hits the glorious driver. And then Azumi reverses the pin that Julia is going for into her own pin for two. And I was just like, that's where I kind of went, what the fuck? Like, you <laughs> this, this, this is a move that's won her championships and beaten some of the biggest names. And Azumi's kicking out of it. And I, I don't like when people nonchalantly kick out of somebody's, like, top finishes i get that usually also we got to keep in mind that usually those top finishes are coming after five ten minutes of oh i understand fighting like, and stuff like this where this was like 45 seconds but again like you watch a wwe match and if randy hits his rko in the first two minutes the match is over because that's his big finisher right so i just yeah mm. so yeah, she reverses and gets her own pin. Then she gets a Zumi Sushi for two. And then she they roll around and she gets another Azumi Sushi. And the match is over in 55 seconds. Yeah. I, I'm not mad at the result. I'm not mad at Azumi winning. That's not <laughs> it. I'm just mad that we got gypped on, an, on a what could have been a very good 10-minute match. I agree. And I, I've been thinking about that because I felt like it was one of those weird, shocking ones. I'm trying to rattle my brain on the reasonings behind that. Because maybe there's something we don't know about going on backstage. Maybe there's an injury that needs to be nursed and maybe someone should have, like, they couldn't take the night off or something. I don't know what's going on. I am a little annoyed that the post stuff afterwards was longer than the actual match and intros. Oh, by but, a long, by a um, long But gosh, does it set up for an interesting story with these two? Oh, oh, for sure. Like Especially I, with I, Tommy now gone. I look forward to seeing what Azumi does here. Like Absolutely. she now has a win over the NJPW Strong Ch Women's Champion. She I is. look forward to seeing when these two face off in another singles match. And we'll we'll get that probably a 20-minute banger from these two, mm -hmm. which I'm super looking forward to. I just – I'm disappointed that we didn't get a 10- to 12-minute match because I was really – going into this, I was really looking forward to seeing what these Same. two could do together, Same. really work together. And, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that was definitely a management – fail on this one but uh yeah. considering what we ended up getting in the main event maybe maybe something went over maybe something went under i don't know i'm sure there was some kind of reasoning why we got this Probably. but um i hope it it makes better sense once we get there <laughs> um yeah. yeah but like i said I, I was a little disappointed that the the post stuff that happened afterwards 
So yeah, it was longer than the actual match. So Azumi leaves, and the camera's following Julia around outside the ring as she's like kind of having a little bit of a meltdown. Well, understandably so. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it, it's not unheard of here, especially for what happened. And then you yeah. see on the, it pops up. Hey, Julia, where's the always cool Julia? And I still have no idea who's talking because it still hasn't shown who's in the goddamn ring. This is a few seconds in, yeah. and then it shows Ami Saray at the ringside, and she grabs the strong woman's title and brings it into the ring and says, "Come on up here." She says, Julia, the strong champion, lost in less than a minute. Is the champion getting too relaxed? And Julia says, I'm not relaxed. You can tell she's not relaxed at all. <laughs> she's <laughs> losing her shit. She is far yeah. from relaxed. Uh, and Ami Saray says, sorry for the suddenness. Let me challenge for the strong belt. And then Julia goes, nope. <laughs> Simple, nope. And he's like, why should I? How many wins and losses do you have in the five star? And Nami just kind of like looks almost defeated. And she's just like, I'm three and five. Like she she's yeah. like, I you got me here on this one. Um and then so so Julie goes, No way. Like saying, No way, you're not getting this title shot. And then uh Ami makes a great point here, and she goes, no, no, no. This belt was challenged for by Momo Kogo, who isn't even in the five-star. So she is making a strong point. That and not only that, Momo was also involved in the initial tournament for it and was unable to capitalize as well. The initial tournament, she lost in the four-way. She was the one who got pinned in the four-way at, at, at the Impact show, and then at the Impact uh, Multiverse show. And then she lost to Julia on top of it. So she had three, she had three, this girl who's not even in five star has had three opportunities to go after this belt and she can't. Yeah. So, yeah. I, 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 I'll give it to Ami Saray. She has the claim here. Mm -hmm. um, so, why can't I challenge for it? And uh, Julia just goes, I don't know why that happened, referring to Momo. <laughs> just like, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> just like, wow, that's a dick thing to say. <laughs> um, and then she goes, Julia goes, Azumi got me into this mess by beating her, I guess. <laughs> she did. And she goes, I don't want to say yes right now. All and then um, he's like, All you all you can do is say yes. I won't hear no. And then Julia goes, Is that the only reason? I don't approve. And then Ami's um, like, it's true that I didn't have a good result in the five-star this time. I lost the goddess belt. I lost the future belt. And now I have nothing. But now, now I think I have to change. That's why I want Strong to be the catalyst for that change. And Julia says, you know, I don't think this is just a trigger belt for, you, for guys like you. Or something light like that. Which I get it. Like she does, she considers this a prestigious. She doesn't consider this as somebody's restart, mm -hmm. which I understand. Which mm -hmm. is how everybody should be treating any belt they hold. They should mm -hmm. think of it as a not just a stepping stone belt, right? Mm -hmm. but, but Julia says, "But if you have passion for something, go ahead and tell me so that I can see it. Then I'll accept." And then she leaves. So there's no confirmation. That we're getting this championship, but I think it's going. We're going to be leading to getting this championship match. I was going to say this will probably be the start of like a series of matches that Ami kind of hops through the hoops for. To uh, interesting choice of word, passion. Mm -hmm. hmm. Maybe some pineapple and some power in there too. I mean, let's just start with the passion. See how that goes uh, but it would make sense that that would be a stepping stone as you will that that ami would have to kind of get over because they did they they did win them back from you and nani but they did initially lose those goddess of stardom championships to you and nani did they not i don't know I, I can't remember who yeah and then they got them back but then they dropped them to club Venus. or no oh, um, no, um, no they so that's a point and, and, and Sayori, right? No, because it went to Club Venus. 
Oh, right, Clavinus, yeah. And then it went to Saria and that's your point. Yeah. But again, it's, and then she lost her future stardom title belt a while back on top of it all. So, like, she's yeah. not had a great year this year with titles. No. But her future of stardom championship run was actually really, really good. Like, I thought she did pretty good. Oh, Rena's the future champ now, right? Yeah, but when I'm saying last year when Ami was. Oh, yeah, she did a great job. She had a job. tremendous run. Just tremendous this year run. has. She's competent. She's a capable champion. Yes, yeah, just this year she's been unlucky. Simple as yeah, that. Yeah, she's had a sorry year. She's and had she's some sorry luck. Yeah, and she's gonna she's gonna come back. She's gonna make that ramp up 100%. to finally get. Maybe this is maybe it's Ami and Julia on the 29th, and this is how you build. And Ami starts winning these like singles matches during, like off man, nice. off days on these uh, on during the the tag tournament, and Ami earns herself her way into maybe the 29th show, and it's her and Julia nice. for the strong title at the tw on the 29th. Because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. potentially we have. Four singles title, high end singles title matches potentially on that show. You get the IWGP, you get the Wonder, you have the World, and you have the Strong. That's four potential big title matches on top of having the uh, tag titles. And then whatever happens with the trios belts, like the artist mm -hmm. belts, because mm -hmm. those might end up on Bane, Micah, and uh, Suzu here in a couple weeks. Again, like we. You, it's, the the show. it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. Mm -hmm. The the landscape is changing in stardom. It really is. It really is. I'm mm -hmm. really and I'm really enjoying how the, the the what it's turning into. Yes, I as it, well. And Mariah May needs to stay. <laughs> For the love of all things holy, please hang on to that woman. Yes, please. But we please. move on. Main event of the evening in the Red Stars Division. It's Siri versus Tam Nakano. Uh, they lock up early, trading holds, trading kick attempts, trading pin attempts. Uh, Siri hits Tam and gets her into the corner, attacks her, hits the DDT suplex for two. She hits the kick to the back for two, then applies a rear naked choke, but then misses a kick in the ropes. Tam gets a running knee in the ropes. Tam goes up to the top as she sends Siri to the floor off the running knee in the ropes. Uh, but Siri comes up to the apron trying to knock her off. But but Tam fights her. It's like a hanging choke from the top rope. Yeah, like Siri, a, it looked like a dragon sleeper to me. Yeah, like it, I, yeah, it might have been a, dra a hanging dragon sleeper. Yeah. Uh, and then Siri falls to the floor. Tam uh, hits a high cross off the top to Siri on the floor. But then Siri fights back, and she gets a tornado DDT hop like from the floor off the apron. And hits tonight DDT to Tam on the floor. Uh, they get back in the ring, and they're both sitting in front of each other, and they start booting each other in the face. It was really good from the seated mm -hmm. position. Uh, then they start to stand up. They trade forearms. Tam unloads on Siri. Then Siri gets a chest kick to Tam, but then Tam catches a chest kick. But Siri ends up uh, getting out, and then hits her with a running kick. Oh, sorry, Siri comes back and. Kicks Tam while she's running. Sorry, mm -hmm. I apologize. Uh, Tam hits a then comes back with a rolling elbow and a backdrop suplex for two. Uh, Tam goes to the top. Siri cuts her off. Gets a hammerlock suplex off the top uh, into a hammerlock on the mat. Then transitions it into an arm bar. But Tam does eventually get to the ropes. But Siri then gets a kick, to, like running kick in the ropes. Siri then comes up, goes to the top. It's a it's a famous her off the top for two. Then Siri sets up, hits a green killer for two. Uh, Tam then gets a roll up into an inverted triangle. But Siri eventually gets to the ropes. Uh, Siri gets to German, but uh, as she's going, as she's going for a kick, she gets her feet, feet swept over under her. And Tam hits the running and hits the running knee. But Siri comes back with a roundhouse, and they both follow the mat. Uh, Siri hits a code breaker, hits, and then a running knee for two. Tam hits a tiger suplex and hits a series of running knees, probably like five or six, just going mm -hmm. wham, 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 wham. Mm -hmm. One gets, right after the other, yeah. Yeah, and she gets a two count. Uh, and then she gets a series of kicks to the head for another two, then picks her up, Violet Screwdriver, and Tam Nakano is your winner. Mm -hmm. 
She's and weaning. And you know? did she have to work hard for that? Oh, yeah. Thing? Holy hecking crap. Like, it's been interesting to see with the addition of Kashimasaki to God's Eye to see, like I've mentioned it before, when I see her tag with Suri, we see the savageness come out of Suri. And it seems that savageness is, is starting to stick around. Mm -hmm. um, this match, Suri was like another person. She she kind of flipped a switch and, and just went into that beast mode. And oh, I would assume that what we saw in this match of Suri was comparable to what we would have seen in her MMA days. Like, yes. Just, oof, it, was, it was a little scary. And she was going in on her. Like, I I really don't know a lot of their their personal history with these two. But just the way they were grabbing at each other's hair before and post-match would suggest to me that there is certainly um, not a lot of love loss um, between the two of these girls. Um yeah, Suri was kicking extra hard today, yelling extra loud, and Tam was like straight up. The last bit of that match, I honestly didn't think that Tam was going to pull a win on this one because she was just straight up getting her ass kicked, mm -hmm. and it, I just didn't see her being able to come back from that. But man, sure surprised me when she started throwing those knees. I was like, okay, now Tam is starting to reach the Suri level of anger and pissed and rage. Um, yeah, to be able to see her pull it around, really, really impressive. It was nice to see her her pull off a win, especially when she's coming off of a few um, pretty pretty big uh, losses. Yeah, again, like like especially losing the to Torah. Are you talking about Suri or uh, Tam? Tam, yeah. yeah, Tam. Again, that loss to Torah really affected her, and like mm -hmm. I was gonna say, if anybody else was gonna beat her in this tournament, I could see it being Suri. Mm -hmm. And both of these women, Torah beat. Pardon? Torah beat both of these women. Yes, yes, she did. It's so crazy, crazy to think. These are two of the strongest women in this company. And Torah, in her own right, also very, very strong mm -hmm. person in this company. But man, she beat both of them, I'd arguably say. And that's Torah, probably stronger than both these ladies. It'll be interesting to see if Tam can hang on to that. Uh, Red belt. Yeah. So Tam gets the mic. She says, hello, everyone in the universe in Osaka. She says, am I cute? I'm trying to fix it a little because your hair is all messed up. Just just cute. Yeah, cutesy little kawaii. Uh, I won for the first time in my life against the strongest Siri. So this is her first ever win over Siri, which is pretty impressed, which is pretty, yeah. which is pretty interesting. Very interesting factoid. Yeah, uh, she says she, she goes. She's too strong. I was scared because she kept coming back to life and kicking and kicking. But as the champion of this red belt, this red belt that Siri carefully nurtured, giving Siri her props for being the champ as a champion, which I which mm. I like. Uh, in 2023, the final day of the five star Grand Prix, I will definitely be Nats Boy, and Tam Nakano will be in the finals. Watch the last day and see me win it all. Finally, on September 30th, the final round of Five Star Grand Prix, the finals. It has been a long, long time. Our way of life will culminate here. Please come and see our way of life till the end. That is a promise. She's doing her kawaii stuff. She draws stars. Oh, is that what it is? Um <laughs> You gotta read the strong spirits stuff more, my friend. You know, is, is that okay? Follow the glittering Tam road through space. Believe in Tam. Thank you. Every time she says the road line, might just be like my millennial mind. But like every time she says that, the only thing I can think about is Rainbow Road and Mario Kart, and I just rage. <laughs> Hate that course. Just thought I'd share. Oh, uh, but again, a really great two shows. I enjoyed the mm -hmm. all, all these five star matches. Again, we're just you know time. That's why we're not doing full cards. So I mm -hmm. uh, hope you guys are enjoying it very much. Um, 
we are done for another episode, so I'm going to tell you where I, you can find me. You can find me on the X Mass that I'm Blue Sky and Hive at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at the Canada Dude on our Facebook page at Andre Melball Wrestling Talk. You can find me over there. Uh, you can find me coming starting next week. Oh, wrong button over on our local establishment, twitch.tv slash our local establishment. It'll be sometime during the week because Loki will be coming out on Thursday nights. So we're hoping we'll figure it out when we're going to be do when the show's going to come out, probably on the weekend, something like that. Uh, myself, Oled, we'll be back with Marvel Talk and hopefully with some special guests. I know there's a week in there that I'm not going to be able to do it. So hopefully he has uh, one of our good friends either Bobby or Astrid or somebody to join him on Marvel talk that week. But yeah, you can check us out over at yeah, Twitter, slash our local establishment, Instagram and TikTok at OLE podcast and at youtube.com slash at our local establishment. You can also find our boy, our homie, our partner in crime, Mr. Mike, the ref over at youtube.com slash at backbreaker video, where he's simulcasting all the videos, which you might be watching us right now on. If you are, go over to on your little stock, give us a like and a subscribe. Uh, but uh, also if you're on watching a backbreaker video, like and subscribe to the channel. hundred percent. Please do that. Um, and you can also check out, he, there's a lot of great live content with his gaming and wrestling watch alongs over on twitch.tv slash Mike the ref. You can find him over there right now. He's in his, he's on his birthday week this week. So go check out his streams. Uh, happy birthday to my boy, Mike the ref. His birthday was yesterday as we record this. So mm -hmm. happy birthday, my, my boy. Happy birthday. Happy um, birthday. So please ch go check out all the great content that he's doing uh, over there on uh, and you check it on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. You can see all the replays at youtube.com slash at backbringer underscore game where you can find him, Mr. PJC, Mr. Rick Jules, and their freaking guest, Miss Kayla J. Kayla J. Love Kayla all, J. Lots of great content over there. So please go check that out. Um, Mel Ball. Yes. Wonder where they can find you at. If you're wanting to follow a Mel Ball, you can follow her on the X thing at. Collins Melball. You can follow her on all the other stuff TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melball Collins. You can also find Melball on our weekly, bi weekly episodic show, Para Mindful, on our local establishment. We'll be releasing another EVP on Monday before we get back into our regular scheduling of our videos here for spooky season. This is the best time to be doing spooky ooky ish. You can also find a Melball on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel doing our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We've got a fun show lined up for you guys talking about some of the crazy stuff happening in women's professional wrestling. So you want to check that out. If you're wanting to watch Stardom Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description, channel description, and it is stardom-world.com. It is 999 yen, or approximately 10 Canadian. Shout out Sean Spears, but it's more like 730, 750, depending on what your dollar dollar is, but it's still a great price to catch some amazing wrestling, like some of the stuff we just talked about today with the five-star Grand Prix, or you can dive back into the uh, the vault there, if you will, check out some familiar faces from AEW and WWE, like maybe Tony Storm, Piper Niven, Shane Baszler. Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. All kinds of women who got their start in stardom. Eo Sky. The Eo return, Sky. The, the soon to be returning Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane. The list goes on. We could keep you guys here all night, but we won't do that because we need to sleep too. Mm -hmm. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank you all so very much. We thank you for all the great support. We really do appreciate it. And that being said, I am your mobile. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mwah!